Hello, and welcome to Read Along with Grandma Sherry. I hope you are doing well. Today's story is Frog and Toad Are Friends by Arnold Lobel. This time, I'm going to read for you the final three chapters of this book. Last time, we read the first two chapters. So we will be finishing up the book today, and I hope you really enjoy it. Let's get started. This chapter is called A Lost Button. Toad and Frog went for a long walk. They walked across a large meadow. They walked in the woods. They walked along the river. At last, they went back home to Toad's house. Oh, drat, said Toad. Not only do my feet hurt, but I have lost one of the buttons on my jacket. Don't worry, said Frog. We will go back to all the places where we walked. We will soon find your button. They walked back to the large meadow. They began to look for the button in the tall grass. Here is your button, cried Frog. That is not my button, said Toad. That button is black. My button is white. Toad put the black button in his pocket. A sparrow flew down. Excuse me, said the sparrow. Did you lose a button? I found one. That is not my button, said Toad. That button has two holes. My button had four holes. Toad put the button with two holes in his pocket. They went back to the woods and looked on the dark paths. Here is your button, said Frog. That is not my button, cried Toad. That button is small. My button is big. Toad put the small button in his pocket. A raccoon came along from behind a tree. I heard that you were looking for a button, he said. Here is one that I just found. That is not my button, wailed Toad. That button is square. My button was round. Toad put the square button in his pocket. Frog and Toad went back to the river. They looked for the button in the mud. Here is your button, said Frog. That is not my button, shouted Toad. That button is thin. My button was thick. Toad put the thin button in his pocket. He was very angry. He jumped up and down and screamed, The whole world is covered with buttons, and not one of them is mine. Toad ran home and slammed the door. There, on the floor, he saw his white, four-holed, big, round, thick button. Oh, said Toad, it was here all the time. What a lot of trouble I have made for Frog. Toad took all of the buttons out of his pocket. He took his sewing box down from the shelf. Toad sewed the buttons all over his jacket. The next day, Toad gave his jacket to Frog. Frog thought it was beautiful. He put it on and jumped for joy. None of the buttons fell off. Toad had sewed them on very well. This chapter is titled the swim. Toad and Frog went down to the river. What a day for a swim, said Frog. Yes, said Toad. I will go behind these rocks and put on my bathing suit. I don't wear a bathing suit, said Frog. Well, I do, said Toad. After I put on my bathing suit, you must not look at me until I get into the water. Why not, asked Frog. Because I look funny in my bathing suit. That's why, said Toad. Frog closed his eyes when Toad came out from behind the rocks. Toad was wearing his bathing suit. Don't peek, he said. Frog and Toad jumped into the water. They swam all afternoon. Frog swam fast and made big splashes. Toad swam slowly and made smaller splashes. A turtle came along the river bank. Frog, tell that turtle to go away, said Toad. I do not want him to see me in my bathing suit when I come out of the river. Frog swam over to the turtle. 
turtle, said Frog, you will have to go away. Why should I? asked the turtle. Because Toad thinks that he looks funny in his bathing suit, and he does not want you to see him, said Frog. Some lizards were sitting nearby. Does Toad really look funny in his bathing suit? they asked. A snake crawled out of the grass. If Toad looks funny in his bathing suit, said the snake, then I, for one, want to see him. We want to see him too, said two dragonflies. Me too, said a field mouse. I have not seen anything funny in a long time. Frog swam back to Toad. I am sorry, Toad, he said. Everyone wants to see how you will look. Then I will stay right here until they go away, said Toad. The turtle and the lizards and the snake and the dragonflies and the field mouse all sat on the river bank. They waited for Toad to come out of the water. Please, cried Toad, please go away. But no one went away. Toad was getting colder and colder. He was beginning to shiver and sneeze. I will have to come out of the water, said Toad. I am catching a cold. Toad climbed out of the river. The water dripped out of his bathing suit and down onto his feet. The turtle laughed. The lizards laughed. The snake laughed. The field mouse laughed. And Frog laughed. What are you laughing at, Frog? said Toad. I am laughing at you, Toad, said Frog, because you do look funny in your bathing suit. Of course I do, said Toad. Then he picked up his clothes and went home. This chapter is called The Letter. Toad was sitting on his front porch. Frog came along and said, What is the matter, Toad? You are looking sad. Yes, said Toad. This is my sad time of day. It is a time when I wait for the mail to come. It always makes me very unhappy. Why is that? asked Frog. Because I never get any mail, said Toad. Not ever? asked Frog. No, never, said Toad. No one has ever sent me a letter. Every day my mailbox is empty. That is why waiting for the mail is a sad time for me. Frog and Toad sat on the porch feeling sad together. Then Frog said, I have to go home now, Toad. There is something that I must do. Frog hurried home. He found a pencil and a piece of paper. He wrote on the paper. He put the paper in an envelope. On the envelope, he wrote, A letter for Toad. Frog ran out of his house. He saw a snail that he knew. Snail, said Frog, Please take this letter to Toad's house and put it in his mailbox. Sure, said the snail, right away. Then Frog ran back to Toad's house. Toad was in bed taking a nap. Toad, said Frog, I think you should get up and wait for the mail some more. No, said Toad, I am tired of waiting for the mail. Frog looked out of the window at Toad's mailbox. The snail was not there yet. Toad, said Frog, You never know when someone may send you a letter. No, no, said Toad. I do not think anyone will ever send me a letter. Frog looked out of the window. The snail was not there yet. But Toad, said Frog, someone may send you a letter today. Don't be silly, said Toad. No one has ever sent me a letter before, and no one will send me a letter today. Frog looked out of the window. The snail was still not there. Frog, why do you keep looking out of the window? asked Toad. Because now I am waiting for the mail, said Frog. But there will not be any, said Toad. Oh, yes, there will, said Frog, because I have sent you a letter. You have, said Toad. What did you write in the letter? Frog said, I wrote, Dear Toad, I am glad that you are my best friend, your best friend, Frog. Oh, said Toad, that makes a very good letter. Then Frog and Toad went out on the front porch to wait for the mail. They sat there feeling happy together. Frog and Toad waited a long time. 
Four days later, the snail got to Toad's house and gave him the letter from Frog. Toad was very pleased to have it. And that is the end of Frog and Toad Are Friends. I hope you enjoyed that book with all the chapters. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.